So there were two different presentations. One was by Dr. Casola, who is in Chile. And he had actually done the study, a part of the, the study that Merck had done, where he drew blood every 20 minutes for 24 hours in the children before and at the end of six months. Merck never shared those data with him and he had never seen them. And when I took over the program, I shared the data with him and he was very impressed by the data and I, as I was. And, but there were only actually a very small number of patients that had been studied. So the study that's been done now is he's taken 22 children and of which 15 were presented at the endocrine society meeting. And he drew blood before and at the end of six months uh, for growth hormone every 10 minutes for 12 hours. And the reason for that is that you can't really analyze 20 minute data to analyze it uh, in the most effective way. Anyway, we've, he's, that's been done now. But basically he, what he showed was that the, his study was just two doses, either 1.6 or 3.2 milligrams per kilo uh, per day. And this is uh, uh, very small tablets that the children can swallow. And um, they had very good compliance uh, with it. They found that the children grew similarly between the 1.6 and 3.2. And the thing that seemed to determine most what is the growth velocity is uh, how um, low their growth velocity was before, the lower it was before, the greater the increase. But they, they found it came out of, I think it was about 7.9 centimeters a year. Um, annualized height velocity based on the six month data. And he also showed some data on the nine and 12 month data, which is within a smaller number of subjects, which showed that they continued their increased growth rate compared to before treatment. And um, it actually it seemed to be particularly resilient. And usually there's a big fall off between six months and 12 months. And there was only a very small fall off here. So, but he said that based on his study of, there were seven and eight, which made up 15 patients. It was too, too small to say which was the better dose, the 1.6 or 3.2. In contrast, the other study, which was Tansy was the first author on, was the combined analysis of both the study that Dr. Casola did, which was the 212 study, and his and the um, international study, which involved, I think, something like 40 centers around the world, ranging from Poland to Australia and New Zealand and the US. And that study uh, had um, four arms. One arm was growth hormone at the usual dose of, uh, I think it's 32 micrograms per kilo per day. The second was three doses of LUM201, the dose that Merck used, which was 0.8. Actually, they used 0.4 and 0.8, but we, uh, this, this study only used the 0.8 because 0.8 was better than 0.4. And also double that dose, 1.6, double that 3.2 milligrams per kilo. Based on the acute responses in normal people to different doses of LUM201, you would predict that uh, the 1.6 would be 80% up the dose response curve and the 3.2 would be way over it. Anyway, the Basically, when they combined the data from the um, 
210 study, which Dr. Tanzi was on, and the Casola study, 212 study, it turns out that there is no difference between the 1.6 and 3.2. So it's likely that going forward, hopefully when we get into phase three, that the 1.6 milligrams per kilo dose will be used. Thank you.